in part two of this video series on panel data regression I'm going to show how to estimate pooled OLS and we're going to do this using a panel data set consisting of a balanced panel of 10 firms each with 20 years of annual data for a total of 200 observations and what we're going to do is to simply pull all 200 observations and estimate one big OLS regression in which we wish to examine how market capitalization relates to capital expenditure and book value of equity of these 10 firms. Now doing this assumes that the regression coefficients, that is the intercept right here, beta sub 0 and the, and the slopes, beta sub 1 and beta sub 2 are all the same for all firms. In other words, the manner of relationship between capex and uh, together with book value and market capitalization is the same for all the firms. Secondly, that the errors are not correlated with uh, any of the explanatory variables so that their covariance is zero. Now, this assumption is necessary for us to be sure that our parameter estimates are unbiased and consistent. And then finally and importantly, that the error term is identically and independently distributed about the mean of zero with a constant variance, the condition of homoscedasticity. Now, essentially, this means that we assume our error term right here to be white noise. So let's kind of show how that works right here on my Excel sheet. You can see how the data are arranged. Now, first, I show the data. It's all color coded for your viewing pleasure, I might, I might say. So this is for firm one from 2001 to 2020. And we repeat the same for firm two over the same period. And then the bid goes on for all the 10 firms, as you can see right here. So what we're going to do is to quickly use Excel to run a pulled OLS regression. I'm going to go to data, go to data analysis. And then I'm going to scroll down to regression, click on it right there, OK. And then for my input Y range, I highlight market capitalization all the way down. Click here for X range. From the top of the file, I'm going to highlight these two guys right here and scroll all the way down. Make sure to check labels right here because of the labels at the top of each column. And then right here for output range, click in there while cursor is blinking there. Let's use a spot right here on the spreadsheet. All right. And dump our output. And that's what it is. All right. So let's kind of highlight our data a little bit. Right, it's very important. A little bit of showmanship in how you lay out your data is very important. So I'm going to uh, make it look a little good right there. Okay, so here we go. So now, first thing after you run a regression is to check to see that um, your F statistic uh, is to look at your F statistic because you want to make sure that the regression as a whole is statistically significant and the answer here is yes because the p-value right here corresponding to the f uh, value uh, is less than 0.01 testing at the one percent level next we'll look at the individual effects of uh, the regressors right there and we can see that capital expenditure right there has a positive impact on market capitalization suggesting that investment in operating capital is viewed positively by investors now we find that book value of equity has a negative effect on market cap which stands to reason actually due to the negative signaling effect that typically accompanies the sale of new common stock now importantly observe that um, p-values for both coefficients are virtually zero telling us that the individual effects of these regressors are statistically significant now for good measure r square which is uh, the coefficient of uh, determination and the measure of goodness of fit tells us that more than 74 percent of the variation in market capitalization is explained by this regression so we can do the same thing on eViews right here so first we're gonna to have to import our file our data set that is click on file go to open and hover across to foreign data as work file now right here we're gonna look for my data set which if I go down here I I grab it right there open it now you can click go ahead and click next next but you can just click finish real quick and know right there and voila all right so right here at the top panel of the window right over here 
uh, shows us that the panel data consists of 10 firms right there with annual data from 2001 to 2020 for a total of 200 observations. We have three variables, the dependent variable market capitalization and two explanatory variables, capital expenditure and book value of equity right there. So let's go ahead and run the regression. So what we're going to do is to highlight each of the three variables in the order that they should ap appear, beginning with the Y variable, the dependent variable, which is market capitalization. So click it first, hold down the control key, and then click on capital expenditure and book value of equity in that order. And then right click on any of these highlighted variables and open as equation right there. And voila, there, there you go. Now then, just leave method to be as least squares and go ahead. You don't need to mess with panel options at this time. So go ahead and click OK and that's your output right there. And uh, as you can see right here, that's your F statistic together with the P value which you saw earlier on Excel. And here's your R square which we also saw earlier over to 74% of the variation in market capitalization is explained by this regression. And here are the coefficients for capital expenditure and book value of equity and their corresponding T statistics and P values. And so when you look at all of this, it looks pretty. It looks um, cool and dandy. And you say, well, what's up? Because um, it assumes that the 10 firms have the same characteristics. Since panel data include different firms with different characteristics, the uh, likelihood of heterogeneity exists and heterogeneity refers to unobserved firm specific characteristics. Examples include the geographic location of the firm, corporate culture, management philosophy, board diversity, etc. etc. So these are the distinct characteristics of the firms. We assume that while these characteristics vary across the firms, they are nevertheless time invariant meaning that they are fixed through time. For example, we can expect the board diversity of a firm to stay just about the same from year to year. However, it may differ across firms. And so as you can see, by lumping together these firms with different characteristics in one pooled OLS regression, we're essentially camouflaging these fixed effects as they are referred to because they are fixed over time. The consequence of uh, is that these firm specific characteristics are going to be subsumed in, you guessed it, the error term. You thought it was white noise. And as a result, the covariance between the error term and the independent variables is not going to be zero. It's an end, uh, endogeneity problem right here. And as a result, the regression coefficients that come out of this regression are going to be biased and inconsistent. As a remedy, we're going to use fixed effect and random effect regression models because both of these take into account unobserved firm heterogeneity. Stay tuned.